Pirates of the Sea Sea pirates are people who hijack and take control of ships in the sea with the sole purpose of robbing and stealing cargo and other goods. Sometimes pirates can also attack and rob towns and dwellings lying close to the coastal areas. In general, people have been engaging in acts of piracy for very many years. It is widely believed that sea pirates have been in existence ever since sailing was invented. Indeed, there are many historical documentations of the exploits of sea pirates dating back to the 14th century BC. History is awash with records of sea pirate attacks on sea routes used by Greek and Roman cargo ships in ancient times. Also, numerous documentations of the exploits and travails of the Viking sea pirates who lived in Europe during the Middle Ages. The pirates of ancient times were interested in anything and everything in the vessel that they could exchange for money. The pirates could seize the ship itself and its cargo. They could also capture the crew and even confiscate the weapons which were on board. Likewise, the ship crew could be caught and held for ransom purposes, or they could be sold as slaves. For the sea pirates, any vessel that came across and seemed to be weak was liable to become their prey. The most documented and famous period of piracy was the so-called Golden Age of Piracy, which occurred in the 17th century. The sea pirates of the Golden Age were known to have hindered the free movement of merchants and their goods along significant sea routes across the world. These sea pirates mainly were from the Caribbean, Americas, and Europe. They were notorious for marauding ships carrying silk, gold, gems, silver, myrrh, frankincense, and other valuables across all the world oceans. They were particularly notorious for plundering treasure and ships that were on a pilgrimage to Mecca. Throughout the 17th century, these sea pirates hijacked vessels traversing the Indian Ocean and destined to Asia and the Middle East. These pirates intended to raid as many ships as possible and accumulate so much treasure, which they transported back to North America through the Atlantic Ocean. During the Golden Age, piracy flourished in the Caribbean and America because they offered sea pirates suitable places to hide and repair their ships. The Caribbean islands were very ideal for piracy because there were numerous remote islands and caves which provided perfect hideouts to the sea pirates. The pirates could easily access the more established harbors from these hideouts where they could recruit more people and enjoy their loot. At some point, the pirates were so potent to the extent that they could establish their self-governing republics. For example, the current capital of the Bahamas, Nassau, at one time became the principal center for sea pirates during the Golden Age where they established a powerful pirate republic. The republic was wholly funded by the loot brought back by the pirates. Other wealthy coastal cities in the Caribbean and America became very attractive for pirates to mount sieges. However, unprotected merchant ships still remain the most attractive target for sea pirates because of their inability to put up any resistance. Sea pirates also inhabited parts of the Indian Ocean and Madagascar because they were out of reach to law enforcement and state government. Power. The modus operandi of the sea pirates was to constantly traverse the sea routes while armed to the tooth as they keep looking out for ships to hijack. The pirates made sure that they had enough people and weapons that would enable them to easily overpower the merchant ships and their occupants. In any case, the pirate ships had enough room to carry more weapons since they do not carry goods while on the prowl. They adorn their ships with peculiar flags with scary symbols, mainly depicting human body parts. They also configured their boats to make them potent and so that they could cruise faster than the merchant ships. The sea pirates of the Golden Age were endowed with the most equipped and sophisticated vessels of that time. Their ships were fast and easily maneuverable, making them capable of capturing merchant ships with much ease. While prowling the vast oceans, the sea pirates will scan and be on the lookout for merchant ships to raid. When they have spotted a ship, they bring up their weapons on the deck and get ready to attack. With their armor visible, the sea pirates cruise their boats to get close to the merchant ship. Upon seeing the heavily armed sea pirates, the merchant ships might surrender without putting up any resistance. However, some merchant ships might attempt to flee away from the oncoming pirate ship. Attempts to flee could force the sea pirates to fire cannons to slow down or bring the ship to a halt. Some put up strong resistance and a fierce fight breaks out, leading to the torture and slaughter of many innocent people. Once the pirates have captured the vessel and board, they use intimidation to force the crew into submission to seize the cargo and treasure. Their victims were made to lie on the floor or were locked in bunkers within the ship. 
They threatened the sailors with dire circumstances if they dared play tricks on them. Victims who were unwilling to cooperate with the pirates or went against their demands had to be executed, and their bodies were disposed of by throwing them overboard. By instilling fear in their victims, the sea pirates made sure that the victims easily surrendered, sometimes without putting up any fight. Testimonies from the victims of these Golden Age pirates narrated the brutal and sadistic demeanor of some of the sea pirates. Indeed, there are records of tales that tell of sea pirates led by the notorious Henry Avery aboard the English pirate ship the Fancy who seized and took control of the Mughal treasure ship Ganjai Sawai. The pirates were so savage and ruthless in dealing with the victims. They tortured the sailors and raped women before stripping the vessel of a vast amount of treasure. The sheer brute and fear mongering ensured that victims spread the news of their exploits and atrocities and, by so doing, enhanced the reputations of the pirates. The sea pirates could then take command of the sea's ship and steer it to a location only known to them. Alternatively, the sea pirates may decide to loot and strip the captured ship of its treasure while still in the ocean. Upon reaching their preferred location, the pirates ransacked the vessel and confiscated all the treasures. They may hide the looted treasure on land or carry it on their ship to distant countries. In ancient times, pirates were fond of burying their treasure on land, and some have been discovered many years later. For example, there have been reports of discovery of a wooden chest with inscriptions Cap and Kidd's chest. The descriptions indicated the name of a notorious pirate of the Golden Age called Captain Kidd. The wooden crate had a false bottom, and within it was a treasure chart of an island situated in the far eastern sea. Sea pirates of the Golden Age did not have the luxury of choosing items to seize from ships. They would take anything that they could lay their find. However, the most valuable treasures were gold, silver, and jewels. The pirates would also seize tobacco, sugar, and cocoa. The pirates would later sell the items to traders from the port cities or neighboring islands. Pirates also raided ships for things that were necessary for their daily lives, such as food, medicine, wine and liquor, sails, anchors, and spare parts for their vessels. The golden age of piracy came to an end when European countries started introducing strict anti-piracy laws and increased the number of warships patrolling the ocean. They also offered amnesty to see pirates who returned and threatened those who refused with dire consequences of caught. However, the memories of the exploits of the sea pirates, their tales of cruelty and courage could not be forgotten and still live on today. Although piracy has dramatically declined since the Golden Age, sea pirates still prowl. Major sea routes up to date. The rise of strong naval powers worldwide has drastically suppressed the attacks and seizures of ships by sea pirates. The shipping industry has also made tremendous efforts to reduce the risk of attacks by sea pirates. The shipbuilders are purposely building ships that are harder to attack and easy to defend. Also, the enhanced coordination between international, national, and local governments, coupled with better aerial and naval surveillance of shipping routes, has come a long way to diminish the attacks by sea pirates. These efforts and other initiatives have led to a significant decline in the number of attacks and hijackings of ships worldwide. Nevertheless, there still exist some sporadic activities by sea pirates attacking and hijacking sea vessels in some parts of the world, such as the Indian Ocean and the South China Sea. In particular, the East African coast and the Gulf of Aden have become notorious for attacks and hijackings of commercial ships by sea pirates since 2008. The modern-day sea pirates use small, fast-moving boats to attack and hijack large vessels and oil tankers transporting cargo across the seas. The sea pirates then rob the ship of cargo, or seize it and the crew for ransom. The pirates often hold the crew and cargo in their safe havens as they wait for the ship owners or any other interested party to approach them. They set the conditions for the release of the cargo and crew and sometimes appoint intermediaries to negotiate on their behalf. Many times the negotiations take a long time to conclude and can drag on for several months. But in many instances, they've released the crew and cargo once they come into agreement with the owners. 